Crooked Dealer Finance Manager Gets Busted. Hello, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, here today with the amazing Elizabeth. Some time ago, we published a reaction video to Dan Whitney on dealer fraud. Dan reported that one in five contracts that he's reviewed had some kind of fraud on them. So the story we're about to share with you today is sadly more common than you think. Most of the time when you hear us referring to the finance manager at a dealership, we say him. In this case, the finance manager was not a male. The female finance officer in the upcoming story abused her good looks in the hopes to enamor the car buyer and get them to look the other way. But it didn't work this time. Let's take a look. Now at 4.30, a one and only exclusive, a woman arrested, accused of forging signatures on documents at her job to help people with bad credit buy cars. And that woman worked at a dealership in Miami Shores. Police say an unsuspecting victim started getting bills to pay for cars they didn't purchase. Local 10's Ian Margle, live to explain this one. Ian. The allegation here is that a financial manager at the dealership forged a woman's signature on a document for a car she never agreed to co-sign for and police say the financial manager did it for a commission. 31-year-old Sofia Pinedo was arrested on Thursday, charged with forging someone's signature on a document for a car purchase worth more than 50 grand. Pinedo works as a finance manager at Tropical Chevrolet in Miami Shores, and apparently on September 30th of last year, a man came in to buy a car, but the man's credit wasn't good enough to buy it on his own, so he used his ex-girlfriend as a co-signer. Both of their signatures are on the documents, but the man's ex says she never agreed to co-sign, never went to the dealership, and never signed any documents. In Pinedo's arrest form, police say that victim even provided two notarized documents with her signature on them, and that okay, those signatures... A notarized signature. So what ought to happen to those notaries? Because many dealerships have a notary in-house, and that notary obviously completely aware of the fact that this isn't the woman sitting in front of her signing, the finance manager signs it herself. She never witnessed any signature, but yet notarized the document anyway. Wow. Yeah. That notary uh, needs to have the uh, hammer of the law come down on her too. Yeah. Clearly don't match the ones on the document provided by the dealership. Police also checked license plate readers in Miami Shores and on expressways in all of South Florida and found no sign of the victim's vehicle entering the area on September 30th. In fact, the victim's boss confirmed she was at work that day on the other side of the state. So how did her signature get on those documents? Police say Pinedo told the man she would send the documents to his ex for her to sign, but instead she forged the signature herself and submitted them because it's she so much a commission easier. on every car she helps sell. And when they asked Pinedo about it, detectives say she lied, saying, quote, the defendant advised the victim was present and signed the documents in front of her. Did they really expect the dishonest person to now tell the truth and go, oh, yeah, I fudged that signature? Yeah. Right. Once, you're, once you say one lie, you just can't get out of it. You have to just keep yep. lying, right? Have to build lie after lie. Yeah. So Tropical Chevrolet tells me they are taking this seriously and cooperating with the investigation. They say Pinedo has worked here for six years. She's been put on leave until this investigation is complete, but she is still an employee. Okay, stop this right there. Um, the interesting part is, is that in many cases, the crooked employee is actually following the directive of the owner of the dealership. Now, I'm not saying that that's the case with this particular dealer, but that, you know, the dealership is cooperating fully I'd like to hear this dealer come out with a public statement condemning her conduct. Right. That's what that's what the dealer should be doing. If the dealer is really appalled by this action and if the dealer owner is not part of making this happen, he should come out publicly and state that he's appalled by the action taken by his finance manager. Because you know what's happening other places. Like this is not the first time we've heard about this. Yes, and I'm completely aware of the fact that in one particular case, where a finance manager was supposedly fired by the dealership after some crooked conduct happened. Um, the dealer owner never condemned the behavior of the finance manager at all, uh, other than to tell the attorney general in that state that the finance manager was on drugs, but <laughs> didn't say anything else. He might not have been the only one. <laughs> fired the guy and then rehired him at another dealer location that he had. 
because the finance manager was just doing the bidding of the dealer owner. So the sad part is when you run into crooked conduct by employees of the dealership and you ask to see the owner, well, they're the source of the bad conduct and they're just going to pretend they want to help you. They'll smile and yet they're the ones driving that corruption in their own dealership and business. You're talking to the dirty devil himself. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks everyone for joining us. I want to express heartfelt appreciation to those of you who have donated or asked how you can donate to help with my medical expenses. As you can see, my recovery is going quite well, but it costs a lot of money to get sick in this country. Our staff has put the PayPal and Cash App links in the description box down below for those of you who are interested. And 100% of donations from our viewers are going towards Kevin's medical expenses. All right, if you appreciate our video today, consider giving us that great big thumbs up and please always remember to comment on our videos and share them with family and friends. Comments really matter because they help boost our online visibility and lead others to great Homework Guy content. The entire Homework Guy team is here to represent you, the car buyer, and that's what we love to do. Thanks everyone for coming back. We'll see you on our next video. You guys rock. I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy, here with the amazing Elizabeth, the Homework Gal. We, we gotta, gotta go. go. Kevin Hunter, The Homework Guy. Today I'm gonna to do something a little bit different. I'm gonna share with you the contents of my book, Is That the Best You Can Do? I learned this question from the car business. I noticed car buyers use it frequently and I immediately wondered, why don't we ever ask ourselves this question? Wouldn't we change the outcome of everything if we did? Understanding the background helps, so let's talk about the last time you went car shopping. I'll be naive and assume the salesperson did a masterful job and perhaps you loved Everything there was to know about him or her, that would be rare indeed. It didn't matter. Nothing they said or did would have made any difference when you sat down to finally look at the numbers at the bargaining table. You still asked that nasty little question that made the salesperson rather uncomfortable. Is that the best you can do? After the awkward silence and some fumbling hesitation, depending on how prepared the salesperson was for the question, the conversation went any number of directions. It didn't matter what explanations or defenses were given. Everyone at the table knew the answer to the question before it was even asked. What was important is that it was asked. This offer was not the best they could do. You knew it. The salesperson knew it. The manager knew it. People who weren't even there knew it. Everyone knew it. Excluding those extremely rare situations, the first offer is never the best anyone can do. They had to make an offer to find out how ready you were to do business, and they left room so you could feel like you won a little. 